Hello creatives, it's Lisa Agaron here. Welcome to Mixed Media Minis, which I've also nicknamed M&Ms because not only are they mixed media, but they're also mobile. So the fun thing about these little guys is that you can take them on the road. You can work on them when you're on the plane. You can work on them when you're in a hotel room someplace. They're easy to take to a coffee shop and work on you know, away from the studio, away from your home. So that's why I love these little guys because, you know, you could be someplace on the beach somewhere and be working on your minis. These uh, cards are also call, also referred to as art trading cards. And there's a community out there that are, uh, that are really into working this small and then trading them back and forth. So you might want to just Google art trading cards. Also, um, a lot of art stores call these guys tiles. Um, watercolor tiles is another name for them. So that's just information that for you to think about when you're going into the art store looking for smaller pieces. Um, but I will talk more about the materials later. Another great thing about working small is that sometimes when you're working big, the large canvas or wood panel is so overwhelming that you find your creativity might be a little bit stuck or you don't know where to begin. So I always encourage my students to start working small. This is also kind of like a warm up. You know, your creativity, does it's not always easy to just jump in and feel creative and get into the flow. Sometimes you have to warm, do a warm up, which is what I call a warm up. It's like warming up your brain, warming up when you work out. Um, you have to warm up your creativity. And working small takes the pressure off. It, you don't have a whole lot of expectations on this becoming a masterpiece. So when you start small, you can just kind of run through these little guys um, fast and it's easy to get some ideas out. So that's why um, working small is also something to consider when you feel stuck creatively, uh, when you're work working on a project or if you want to work on a body of work or just want to start working on a bigger format, you might want to start small first. So I'm going to go ahead and show you some samples. These are samples of um, my minis that I've worked on over the years. And you can see there's a combination of paint, collage material, there's even fabric. I've used some cheesecloth in here. And you can use a variety of materials. So I'm going to go over some of the materials that you can actually work with um, later on. But I wanted to show you kind of the example of what these guys look like. Now, a couple things you can do with these guys is that there, once you've made them, you can make like greeting cards. You know, these are easy to just put on, gl glue on directly onto a greeting card. And, you know, if you have hundreds of these, these are really good for gifts and you can just personalize the greeting cards or you can make a bunch of them and give them away. That's one idea. Also, what I have done is I've actually f framed some of my favorite ones. And um, these are really good for gifts. Um, I love the way they look once they're framed. So that's something that you can also consider if you have some minis that you absolutely love and you think, wow, these are really cool, I want to frame them. So I just wanted to give you some ideas on what you can do with these minis once you're done. Here's another idea if you have a bunch of them and you want to just, what you can do is just hole punch the corner and actually Ha group them together with a little binding ring. And this is what you call a binding ring because you can actually take it out, take them apart, and then lock it back in. Now, these, this size is 3 quarters inch. You can go thicker if you feel like you have a lot of cards. So that's something that you can do. It's, it's a fun way of um, keeping all your 
little mixed media minis together. So I wanted to show you that as an example. Another thing to think about when you start working is color, color schemes or themes. Like for example, you know, when, when you're working quickly, you can start getting into uh, an easy color scheme or theme. And that's a fun thing to do. You know, here's another example of what I did is a, I did a theme where I used not only similar colors, but I also used similar collage material and then made kind of a, a, a set. So that's something that you can do also with your mixed media minis. So another example I wanted to give you in terms of, you know, using it as a warm-up exercise is it's really good to just run through a bunch of these to get ideas down and you're not having to worry about being meticulous or worrying about having to have this perfect. You can just slap on color, slap on collage just to get some ideas going. And then you can take one of these guys and translate it. So if there's one that you absolutely love, you can then translate this into a larger piece. So I wanted to show you um, an example of that. This is something that I do on one of my retreats. And what you do is um, you you know, do the exercise and then you pick one that you like and then you make a bigger version of it. So this, you can see how this translated into a larger version. That's why it's really good to use as a warm up. Here's another example where this is, this is what I ended up with when I did my warm up exercise and then decided to do a larger version of that. So I wanted to just show you how that translates to a bigger piece. So I'm now going to go over the materials. But first, before I do that, make sure that you print out um, the printout, the PDF that this the course came with. And I printed out, there's not a whole lot here. And actually, I thought it would just be fun to do a miniature, you know, um, pamphlet. So I've, I've actually laid it out on an eight and a half by 11 and all you have to do is just cut it in quarters. And then you can staple them and then you have your own little miniature notes here. I just thought that was fun. Um, you will, I also have the materials here as well, but I will go over them. And I first, I wanted to show you as I go over the materials, is that I have this little case. This is kind of how, you know, my miniatures come that I can just put into my suitcase or my bag, my carry-on bag, and take it with you. So this is really a cool little, little container, and it, the size was perfect. So what I did is I just, you know, put some of my cards in here, and, um, and then I also have my little tools in here as well which I'm going to go over some of these things. And it, it's just perfect to fit. Here's another container that I have. I have my gesso, I have my acrylic medium Mod Podge, and then my cards. So just to go down the list, you first want to, um, so you want to think about some kind of container that you want to put your mini miniatures in and also um, your materials in. So the thing you want to do is you can either buy these tiles pre-cut at Michael's or an art store, but what I found is they tend to be very expensive and you don't really get a whole lot in a packet. So the easiest way is to get, you know, a pad of Canson watercolor 140 pound weight, 9 by 12 and you can just cut them. You can cut them to size. This is four by four. Um, you can also do, you know, this is pretty standard size. Three by four is a standard size. 
you can get out of the 9 by 12, you can actually get nine of these out of each sheet. So that's something you want to do um, when you start trying to get, you know, trying to collect some of your blank cards. Um, and I wanted to let you know about that because this is much more inexpensive to cut your own. Now you can either cut it with an exacto knife or just cut it with um, a paper cutter. You are going to want, and this, that's what was in my kit, is you're going to want Mod Podge or Decoupage. This is for gluing your collage materials down. And, you know, this is what's great is, you know, one of the things that you want to think about is everything kind of goes smaller. So you want to get maybe a small container of Mod Podge. I actually just poured in this little plastic container my, I call this acrylic medium or it's decoupage and, you know, that's easy to just fit right in here. Another thing too is you want to get a little bit of tacky glue because sometimes if you're working with thicker fabric, or coarse materials, this tends to help get those materials down a lot better than the Mod Podge. Um, again, if you want to think smaller, I bought, this came from like a little trial size packet of different types of tacky glue and I love this because I can just twist this off and refill it and it's, perf it's the perfect size. You also want to get some gesso, and again, I put this in a little container, and this is usually the gesso that I use. It's, it's cheaper than the regular gesso. It also is much more fluid, which I love, so you might want to pick some up. Um, this also comes in a little tube as well, so you don't have to buy a big container. But like I said, for traveling, you might want to consider getting a little container for that. So what else is in my little kit, which is important, is um, a few tools here. You want to pick up some something that will burnish your collage down or squeegee your collage down. I, I happen to pick some of these up now. You know the, um, the little screen protector that you get to put on your phone? will often come with a little rubber squeegee like this. Um, and this is perfect, the perfect size. You also can pick, this is called a putty spreader. And usually putty spreaders will come in this size. This is the size that I use in my workshop, other workshops and retreats. But I found this version of it and it's smaller. And it's the perfect size and it, it has the, the same um, firmness yet flexibility pl type of plastic. So you want some fo um, form of small squeegee to burnish down your collage material. Also, this little gadget, which is really cool, is a traveling scissors. Now what's great about this is that it's, a, um, it's TSA approved. So you can actually take this onto the plane. Um, I picked this up while I was traveling and I thought, wow, this is perfect because it's, it's compact and it's TSA approved. I also have some paint brushes. Now, these paint brushes are small because I cut them. Now, this is normally the size of the paintbrush. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to fit them, make them, make sure that I could fit them in here. So what I did is I, I took some of my favorite brushes. Some of these are all beat up, but because they were beat up, I thought they would be perfect for um, traveling. And then I cut them. And you can cut them, you know, either with a, a bandsaw or hand cut them also with some sort of craft saw. So that's a really good idea, and I have, as you notice, I have a variety of different types of um, bristles and brushes, like a fine one. So you want to have a variety. Another thing that you might want to also th consider 
is a small sea sponge, and I'll show you why these I use these versus sometimes I use a combination of brushes and sea sponges. But these are just smaller versions of the sea, sea sponges. Normally I have the bigger ones, but this one I cut down to size to fit in here. Okay, and then you also want just a little pencil. Um, on occasion you may want to draw something or outline something, so that's kind of important. And um, I also have a little miniature um, spray bottle, and this is to wet your tiles. But if you don't have one of these, that's fine. You can actually just apply the water with a uh, paintbrush. So like I mentioned before, you want to have um, three-quarter inch binding rings, and you can find this online. Um, I got a packet by Tim Holtz, which was perfect because it had a couple of different colors. So another thing you want to do is get some thread, and I just picked up th this from a little traveling kit because they're small, and I can actually fit them in my kit, and a sewing needle. And um, the reason why you want to get that, and this is really optional, you don't have to have this, but if you want to embellish, and sometimes what I'll do is I'll embellish my uh, tiles, my mixed media minis, with a little bit of thread, which is kind of fun. It's just a little bit of an additional element that you can incorporate into your little mixed media mi minis. So, but again, this is optional. Another thing you want to do is you want to make sure you have enough collage material. So you want to make sure that you have, you know, a variety of collage material. And this is also, again, a preference if you're attracted to certain colors. And I have a couple of variety here. I have um, handmade papers, a mixture of handmade papers. I have some, you know, magazine clippings. And then I also have some text paper, um, little pieces of corrugated board. Now you'll notice that a lot of these pieces are small because again, remember, you're working smaller. So I have a variety of, t you know, like I have um, some Asian writing and some, you know, more handmade paper, some tissue paper. So you can just begin to have a collection of um, materials. Now, this can go into a Ziploc bag when you're traveling also. So it's because when things are smaller, they actually can go into a Ziploc bag. And then what I've done is I've also collected a variety of, of fabric, because fabric is so much fun to play with when you, you know, it's just an added dimension to your mixed media piece. So, You'll see, I'll put on material here. This is a piece of material here on top of the paper collage. So that's just another fun element to add to your piece. Again, I have a variety here. These are regular, you know, this is um, like a weave. And then I have um, cheesecloth. This is a fine cheesecloth. And one thing about cheesecloth is this particular one I think is used for, you know, for baking. It is a finer weave, which is perfect for your um, mixed media mini. I also have a little bit, I have some lace in here as well. And again, you want to think small, think small in terms of the pattern being small and also the weave being small. Another great collage material is stamps because they are small. Uh, and they are great, they add great imagery onto your mixed media piece. So those are really fun. So make sure that you have a collection of stamps as well. So the final thing that you're going to need is a watercolor set. And this is by Winsor Newton, and it's a, it's a compact travel watercolor set. 
And this one is kind of cool because it comes with a little uh, water brush where you actually put water in the vessel and you then attach the end tip which has a bristle on it. And then just a little bit of squeeze on that pushes the water through the bristle and then you can activate or, or moisten the watercolor. So that is a really cool little addition to have and you can actually buy these separately online. Um, you can also get one of these which is perfectly fine. This is a, also a watercolor pan set and it comes with different colors and um, this is also easy to travel with. So it really is up to you what you want to take with you. So that's it for the materials. So let's get started.